Hello, good evening, and thank you very much for joining us tonight. Today is a very big day in our movement, very big, because today is the official declaration of Africa's first economic war. Today is the official announcement that we are taking back the destiny of our society. Today is the official announcement that the economic hemorrhage, the exploitation, now begins to end, and Africa now starts to become the wonderful place that it has been designed by God to be. It's very important for me to make you realize or remind you of what we're doing on this platform. What we're doing on this platform is to create a superpower African nation. A superpower, one superpower African nation. A superpower African nation that we can be proud of, that can compete with Europeans, with Asians, with Americans. A superpower African nation that we can call home and be lift up our heads and say, yes, we do have a place. That is what this platform is doing. And this platform is doing that using the powers of the private sector. To create a superpower African nation, and we have gone through the show, don't forget, and establish the need for us to create one nation in Africa. But there's a problem with doing that. There's no continental authority in Africa. There's none. The imperialists made sure that we don't have any control command in Africa. We don't have. There's no African president whose words mean anything outside of his country. The African Union doesn't have any power here. No influence on anybody. So you see, we have no continental power. So if we have no continental power structure, how are we going to bring about continental economic recovery and development? On what foundation are we going to use to do that? Because there's no continental authority. There's nothing that can bind us together in one authority and in one command in Africa. All thanks to the imperialists. So since we have no continental command, and there's nothing that we can use as the command force to unite ourselves and declare Africa's first economic war. We have to forget about the factors that we see on our planet and look at something that we don't see, which is God. The continental power that can bind all of us together is God. The continental power that can be our center of authority for the entire Africa to rally around, rally behind, is God. It's the only hope we have. If we had a continental authority, then maybe we'll say maybe we don't need God. But we don't have. So we are inevitably in need to invoke God into what we're doing. But we shouldn't be feeling bad that we're invoking God into what we're doing. Why should we? Africans right now run to Europeans for continental power. If Africans have an issue, maybe in some countries they have whatever issues, the people go to report to Europe. If there's a problem in Nigeria or in Ghana or whatever country, they go to report to America. This is embarrassing. Why should we report our problems to Europe? The people who cause most of our problems are Europeans. But because we don't have any continental power, we have to resort to talking to these people. And we're not going to talk to them tonight because they will never help Africa recover economically. The idea is to keep Africa poor. So the people you'll be running to are the worst people to run to. We cannot ask them to come and help us fight this economic war. Because what they will do is to find every way to pull it down so that you remain poor and your resources remain cheap and they remain in authority. So we need God as our center of authority in Africa. We do need God. But we should be happy that we're calling on God tonight because he's the maker of the heavens and the earth. Why don't you put your confidence in the maker of the heavens and the earth of Europeans? And when we talk about God, people say, what God are you referring to? Well, the God that most of us believe in. More than 85% of Africans either believe in Christianity or Islam. 
Christianity and Islam believe in the same God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. That God is the God that we're referring to tonight. God, the creator, that one, is the one we're referring to. He's the one we're invoking his powers to declare Africa's first economic war. He's the one that we're using his authority to say that we're going to change our continent. We're going to break the hand of the imperialists. We're going to destroy their stronghold on our destiny. And we're going to build a superpower African nation. So if we're depending on God to do this superpower African nation, what is it about God that we can take tonight to declare this economic war? What lessons, what wisdom can we draw from God tonight? I'll tell you what we can draw from God. A scripture that actually clearly says exactly our situation right now. Africa's situation is described in a scripture, and that scripture is called Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 2, is the place, place to start. Leave the verse 1. The verse 1 is our real conversation tonight. But let's start from the verse 2. And the verse 2 says, darkness covers the earth. Gross darkness, the people. What is Africa's situation? Darkness covers Africa. Unemployment. Diseases, rural communities downtrodden, poverty everywhere, insecurity of lives and property. Africa is the sick baby of the world. Africa is the shame to Africans. Africa is like the, the little sore in the whole world. Nobody wants to hear about it. So Africa is the darkness that covers the earth in that scripture. Then it says gross darkness covers the people. Yeah, look at Africa, illiteracy level. Every, the people are in trouble, they're in bondage. They just move around, they just, they, their quality of life is zero. The slums are too many. The people are in complete darkness. They have no knowledge, they have no real education, they have no money, they have no real sense of direction. There's nothing. They just run to some churches or whoever can pray for them. So you see, Africa fits that scripture very well. Darkness covers the earth. Gross darkness, the people. So we're referring to God. We want to use God as the authority for what we're doing in Africa since there's no central authority. So we're saying, God, you have to be our authority. And if we're saying God has to be our authority, then we ask the simple question, where in the scripture, where, in, in God's history, can we find something that can relate? And we find it in Isaiah chapter 60, where he says darkness, which is Africa's situation. Our poverty is too much, if you don't know that. It's too much. It's abysmal. Pro it's crazy proportions. It's not something that we can even start to say, can we manage? We can't manage our poverty. It is beyond belief how terribly poor we are. So truly darkness covers us. Gross darkness covers our people. Donald Trump called us shithole. He tells you that darkness really covers us. Gross darkness covers our people. They use us to put advertising in Europe to get money for some charities, if you don't know that. In fact, almost every European commercial for donation, they use Africa. African poor children, African villages. Then they will use it and collect money and put it in their pocket. And then send some 2% of it down here. So our poverty is so obvious, our crimes, our, di our disgusting situation is so bad that the whole world uses us now as a radical. So we have no question if there is darkness. We have no question if there is gross darkness. But what is the solution? Again, from that same scripture, we go back to verse 1. And it says, Arise, shine, for thy light has come. In the midst of the darkness and gross darkness, God says, Arise, shine, for thy light has come. So tonight we want to go into that scripture a little bit. The arise, shine, for thy light has come. We don't want to go through the darkness and the gross We already know that we are darkness and gross darkness. But we want to look at our way out of darkness and gross darkness. And our way out says, Arise, shine, for thy light has come. Now look at that. The key thing there, the catalyst, is the light. Light has come. 
That's the catalyst for you to arise and shine. The catalyst, what should now make you arise and shine, is if light has come. So in the darkness and gross darkness, he says, arise, shine, for that light has come. Okay, now remember, we're using God as our authority. So if he says, arise, shine, for that light has come, and the condition for you to rise and shine is that the light has come. So we ask our question, has light come to Africa? That's a very good question to ask. For those who have been following us, you say, ah, really explain to me how has it come. For those who have been following us, just a reminder, we have released 26 episodes of the Economic War Show. We have given Africa more information concerning Africa's economy than anybody in the history of Africa. We have sensitized the African population with content more than any entity since Africa was formulated. If you have no idea, go through the videos that we have. And you see how much education, how much information, how much we have put out there. But if you don't know what light is, let me tell you what light is. Light is knowledge. When he says your light has come, it just means knowledge. Knowledge, that's it. When knowledge comes, the Lord expects you to arise. And I tell people, Africans are not lazy. They say Africans are lazy. I say, no, they're not. They're not. The only reason they don't get up to move is the light is not there. The light has not come to Africa. The level of information, knowledge, that can now get people to run with a vision, with a plan. But it's very clear that light has come to Africa now. We have taught so many things. Capital flight, we've explained that to a lot of people. We've explained why we're in bondage. We've explained the poverty. We've explained the imperial powers. We will explain the suck and dump philosophy they use on us. We will explain how they divided us into different small, small countries so that we continue to fail. We will explain that government is not responsible for job creation. We will explain that prosperity belongs to the private sector. A lot of light has come to Africa. Africa has been illuminated with information. The enlightenment has been released from this platform. We have done 26 episodes, and we have also done other videos to support the amount of knowledge and data that we have put out there. A lot of you have said to us, we get all your mails all the time. Some of you have said to us that we've already achieved the highest thing we can achieve, that we have done the greatest anybody can do. Those who have followed have seen that we have put out so much information. We have taught Africa everything it needs. We have created a blueprint for Africa to run and achieve economic independence. Most especially, we have called for Africa to come and achieve economic independence. We have shown that political independence is a waste of time. We need the proper independence where we have total control of our destiny and the direction of our future. So we have given the information. We have illuminated this continent. If you're not aware, you go and watch all our videos. Most Africans now know what they never knew. People are now excited about change coming here. So has light come? There's no question about that. We have brought light on this platform. We have brought light to Africa. We have enlightened minds. So right now, because light has come, he says, arise. So there are three key things. There. The light has to come. And we have proven that this platform has brought light to Africa more than any platform since Africa became a ten. You can go and verify that. But the next set of the light comes, the Lord says, arise. You have to get up. How do you arise? No, we have the platform for you. And tonight we begin the continental mobile phone switch. And the UPAP devaluation. That is what this meeting is about. But how do you arise? You arise through the platform. You find roles you can play in the economic war. Like the Lord himself also said, write the vision and make it plain that they may run. You see, when it's plain, which is the light, when the light gives direction, write the vision, make it plain, arise, shine, for that light has come. It's the same thing. When the light gives direction, you have to run with the direction. You have to run with the light. You have to follow the sense of knowledge that you've been given. Because knowledge is power, knowledge is money, knowledge is security, knowledge is health, knowledge is everything, Africa. And knowledge has come to you. So you must arise. 
And how do you arise? You arise through the platform. You arise by joining the Switch campaign. You arise by taking up a role on the BWS platform. You arise by becoming a facilitator, a facilitator assistant, an outlet. You arise as an ambassador. You arise, you find a role to play in Africa's emancipation because the light has come. So when the light has come, which we have proven it has, and you arise, what happens? Then you shine, you see? From darkness, light comes, arise, and you shine. That's how we get to a superpower nation. The shine is the superpower nation. As long as you follow the light and you arise, we will get to the superpower nation. Because it, can, it cannot be broken. It's in scripture. It, he's a man, he can't lie. He's not a man, he can't lie. Arise, shine, for thy light has come. The light has come, we've proven that. So now you need to arise, join the platform, pick a role there, and we build this superpower nation and shine to the glory of the world. But it sounds all good. I like details. I like the, I'm not a guy who's going to come and excite you, say to your neighbor, jump around. No, 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 no. We have to look at the details. How is it going to work? How do we arise and shine? How does this all become practicable? We're very pragmatic here, extremely pragmatic, meaning we believe in one plus one equal two. If it's not one plus one, we don't do it. That's pragmatic. Like, we have to make sure that thing works. We don't, we don't ask people to come and join us to take a risk. No, 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 no. This is not a risk-taking platform. Arise, shine, for the light has come. But the question is going to be, who's going to shine? Who's going to arise? How is Africa going to arise? How is Africa going to shine? Africa has over 1 billion people. Right now, it's 1.3 billion people in Africa. And we're going to make sure those 1.3 billion people become one nation. See each other as one, not see each other as one small, small country here and there. But to make that happen, Africans need to profit together. That's why this platform is a platform for common economic interest. A platform for Africans to profit together. So you say, how are you going to achieve that? Well, I'll tell you. There's only one way to ensure massive financial prosperity. Only one. On earth. The only way you can get financial prosperity to a lot of people, 20 million people, 30 million people, at the same time, same periods, is through a system known as the stock market. The stock market, that system of stock market, is the only way you can empower people financially. A lot of people, a lot, in their numbers, in millions and millions and millions, and fund businesses, and give people loans, and, and provide them. The only way to do that is a stock market model. That's why Europeans are so obsessed with stock market. They're so obsessed. Why? It's the only way. The only institution Europeans really protect is just the stock market. Their government is there for security. Their government, the job of government in Europe is security. Just give us security. Make sure that we're okay. Then private sector builds the economy using the stock market. That's how Europeans develop their society. So you need government focused on security. They need a very vibrant, solid stock market. That's what you need. And some of you will see that Africa has tried to do some of those things. You see a lot of stock exchanges across different countries. But they're a joke. They're a joke. One, you need a Pan-African stock exchange system. For sure. You can't do it in one tiny little country. It's not possible. We've gone through all that on the show. We don't have time to do it again right now. We need, we, our strength is our numbers. That's why China is one billion people, one country. India is one billion people, one country. They know that the strength is in the numbers. America is throwing them in people, one country. They know the strength is in the numbers. So our strength is in our numbers. So a, a stock exchange system that is not Pan-Africa is already a waste of time. It's already dead on arrival. The second thing is that most stock exchange systems here are run by government. It's a government idea. Government shouldn't run it at all. Government shouldn't even come near it. But in Africa, it's created by government, formulated by government, run by government. Decided by, appointed by government. It's a government thing. And because the government thing, it always fails. 
What stock market? Who are they funding here? Who has even heard of any stock market funding entrepreneurs? New businesses, new ideas being floated. Who has heard that? So it's a waste of time. The whole thing, the whole stock market system here is a waste of time. We need to build something that is solid, that can get millions of people getting money through one platform. That's what the Black Wall Street platform represents. A stock market system that can spread this well, that can make sure that we rise together. Because the only way to get money to millions and millions of people is a stock market system. It's like a fountain, if you don't know. Stock market, it's like a fountain. It just sprays money. That's what it does. That's what Europeans are obsessed with it. Chinese are also getting obsessed. Indian, everybody wants to develop a vibrant stock market system because it's the only way to show that people are financially empowered in their millions too. It helps people create jobs because industries can get capital in millions of dollars. Look at Africa. Who is able to get millions of dollars in capital right now in Africa? Which entrepreneur is going to get millions of dollars? Who is going to give it to you? You go to the bank, they give you, all of us know this. We don't like going through the problems. We all know the problems here. So we don't have a stock market system. We have no way to fund business ideas. When you have no way to fund business ideas, you have unemployment. Simple as that. You have no supply contracts. You have nothing going on. A stock market system is the only way to fund businesses, provide loans, provide this, help people get returns, that financial framework of prosperity can only be brought through a stock market system. But here's a question now, stock market system. Africans don't like to invest their money. You say, ah, this one is going to be another fraud. Now you want us to invest. Africans don't like to hear the word invest. They think you want to defraud them. And most of the time it's true, unfortunately. There's not much investment, good ideas that are really credible going on here. They are there, but they're not many. So Africans just don't know anything called investment that actually works. Apart from that, we're not trying to be like Europeans. We're trying to make sure that we have a system that works for us. We're not just going to go and copy Europeans. We have to take what they have done, which is a fantastic thing they have done. By, we now know what a stock market system looks like, but we have to build it to fit for us. We have to build it to suit us. We have to now make it become we, not something that is very foreign. So to make it become we, how do we do that? Well, how we do that is, first of all, Africans will never have to spend their money investing in any company on the stock market. We don't want people who don't have to now also get into financial trouble. That's stupidity. That's not savior. That's not helping people in any way. We cannot expose people who have been marginalized for 100 years, 200 years, people who have, been, who have been completely brutalized by Asians and Europeans, a continent that has been squashed and kept in darkness by foreign powers. We cannot tell the same people to invest their cash because you have a good idea. Before you think your platform is better than other people's. Own. No, 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 no. We refuse to do that. So what do we do? We tailor a solution for Africans that work for Africans. People of African descent, we like to shop. Black Americans like to shop. Africans in Africa love to shop. Everywhere you go, you see people of Af African heritage, they love to shop. So what do we do? We tie redirect mall, they are shopping. So every time they shop, they shop African products. So we keep the money within our community. Now when they shop, we can take part of their money and make investments for them on the Black Wall Street and then bring them return through the Black Wall Street. So to get Africa to economic independence, we have two things working for us. We have the Redirect Mall where they can shop, but as they are shopping, they are also making investment. So that way we make sure our people stay in prosperity. So most people already know that, that through the Redirect Mall, you shop, buy our African products, support our economy, then you're able to get points to invest in the Black Wall Street and then get returns from the Black Wall Street so that way entrepreneurs who come on the Black Wall Street can get funded to build their corporations. And as we're building corporations across Africa, then people are able to get jobs, get supply contracts, 
Landlords will be able to get people coming to rent their places. You see, now we bring economic activities back into our society. And that's how you save a race. By making sure that whatever solution that you bring actually fits in with the race, not foreign solution. If you ask Africans to invest money, it's a foreign solution. It's what the Europeans do, eh? They ask you to invest money. But for our people, no. We have to tailor something that is for our people. And that is as you shop at Red Mall, you'll be able to get points on the Black Wall Street, make investments, and get return. So now we're able to spread that stock market ability now through a risk-free way to people all across Africa. Now, what's the next thing now? The issue of rising, because we said arise for thy light has come. So I want to talk about the issue of rising. You cannot sit on the fence with this economic war. You can't. Mm -hmm. This is not about me. It's not about Black Wall Street. It's about you and your family. This conversation is really about you. Why is it about you? The only way we can make money, even me, the only way I can make money is if you have money. You see, if I go to Asia and try and get money from there, Chances are very slow I'm going to get any money from them. Very slim that they're going to buy anything from, from Africa. So the only person who can give me money is you. The only person who can give you money is me or another African. That is the truth. So we need to stop funding people who are, can't give us money back. When you buy Mercedes-Benz, BMW, Jaguar, you're funding Europeans. They will never give you money back. They will never. You are buying Apple, you are buying Samsung, you are funding Koreans. They will never give you money back. You need to put the money to somebody who you can always get it back from. You don't fund your oppressors. You can't be feeding the monster that is oppressing us by buying foreign-made stuff. You can't do that. And we're saying the end of that begins tonight. With the mobile phone switch, which I'm going to explain very thoroughly tonight. Tonight is not a very short meeting. It's going to take time. I'm going to walk you through everything. We will live tonight knowing exactly how we're fighting this economic war. And how you're going to benefit from it. Not having faith in blind faith. You're going to have the numbers tonight. And knowing exactly how this whole process is going to work. So now you understand exactly what we're doing. You need to arise. And you need to, we need to stop feeding these monsters that hate us so much. We need to stop completely. And we're starting that tonight with a mobile phone. We've had a meeting before where I spoke to the engineers across Africa. We're hiring over 11,000 engineers. And we're building 101 phone factories across different parts of Africa. We've released also the locations. Right now, those engineers are very busy. Coupling up plans, putting up things together. We're also working already with an Asian company who is making the phone. So we own the equity in the phone already. And tonight I'm going to show you. I, I use the phone myself. Very lovely. I'll show you at least two tonight that you can have a look at. So they're beautiful phones. But we want to make those phones here in Africa. At the same time, 101 locations. And not just one name phone. The phone will have the names of all our ancestors who fought to make Africa become one. All the 101 different phone factories will manufacture these phones with a name. So if you live in South Africa, for instance, you'll get a phone that bears Mandela or Julius Malema or whoever else that we have named and supported. So these African brand phones from 100 different locations, we want to make sure that we put it in your pockets, in your hands. And you can be proud and you can say, this is African. This means our destiny is in our own hands. We're no longer the slaves of some foreign masters who come here to oppress us. And that's our journey. It begins with the phone switch. And today I want to talk a little bit about the mobile devices market. So when we say economic war, you understand exactly what we're discussing. Now, everything in your family, in your house right now, your home, 99.9% .9 of it comes from overseas. So every time you make money, you are making somebody in America rich. Every time you spend money, an American gets richer, and Asians get richer, and they, a European gets richer, and they look down on our people.
is why it's called an economic war. We have to stop it. We have to change you, empowering them. Then we also have to go and get some money from them as well. So the economic war is both defensive and offensive. Look at the mobile devices in Africa. It's dominated by Techno, Samsung, Apple, Infinix, Itel. Those are the brands that dominate the whole entire Africa's one point something billion people. They make over 60, 70, 80 billion dollars a year, depending on the year. Some years they make 60 billion, some years they make 70 billion from Africa. Then they ship that 70 billion to China or to South Korea, where their brands come from. The only business they have with our people are the importers that help them bring in these products. You don't create any jobs here. No production processes here. No African has equity in these brands. No African is shareholder that shares their profits. So we have no jobs. We have no supply with these people. And also, we also don't have any investment returns from them. And the worst part, they don't pay taxes to our government. They avoid the taxes. They think we're nothing. They think they see us as little. That we're just insignificant. They come here, take our money, forget about our government, create no jobs for us, give us no investment return. Yet take seventy billion dollars away from Africa every single year. And you think we're going to let that just continue? <laughs> you must be joking. You think we're just going to let this people keep taking seven? Then disrespect us like that? No, we're not. Maybe you will. You will remain alone with that phone you're using if you don't switch. Because Africa says no. We don't want any more. That's, a, that's disrespect, my friend. This is called disrespect. When you have no equity, you don't work there, no supply, no tax to the government, and you're still buying the thing from the people. You must be joking, my friend. You're out of your mind. If you think we're going to let that just keep going on like that. You know what $70 billion can do in our society? Then they now go and get loan. They see our government won't have any money. Then the government will run to China. And China will give them a, a loan of $500 million, $300 million, And take our infrastructure. And take our natural resources. And the government will have to sign away our natural resources. You don't even know what your government have signed, most of you. Most African governments have signed us into deep debt. Yet, their companies are getting money from here, you see. And we're on the mobile devices. They are making $70 billion a year from Africa right now. There's no African government whose budget is $70 billion a year. There's none. Most African government, their budget is $3 billion, $4 billion, $2 billion, $4 billion. Some of them, are, their budget is $1 billion in a year. And a company in one sector of Africa takes 70 billion from here. So who is your problem? Is it the government or is it the person who is taking the money away from here? And they're very smart. They know how to make us be stupid and start blaming our government. They will put rubbish in the media, international media, how corrupt we are. Then you believe them. The government doesn't have any money, my friend. You are giving the money to the monsters who hate our continent. I hate because, because we're black and we're African. You're funding those people. Well, that ends tonight. And that's why the economic war is very important. So do or die. Government can't do this economic war. It's a private, it's me and you that can do it. We are the ones that can say enough of the exploitation because the power is in our buying decision. Your buying decision is too powerful. And tonight you're going to use it. Because we've established that when the light comes, you must arise and shine. You have to arise now because you have knowledge that you are funding your oppressors. You have to arise now because you have knowledge that when you spend money buying those stupid phones, you are patronizing people who don't care about you or your children, who don't care about your community, who don't care about schools and building schools for us, who don't care about our factories, who don't care about jobs, those are the people you're funding. And you can't continue doing that. Can't continue doing that. 
Now let me tell you something about capital flight. Capital flight is the devil that torments Africa. Capital flight. That's it. The devil that torments Africa's economy keeps us poor, keeps us downtrodden, keeps us miserable, keeps us with no infrastructure. Every problem we have, the devil himself, his name is Capital Flight. Because what? How, how, how are you going to do anything with, when the money you have disappears? Every money disappears from Africa. They will buy cars. No car is made in Africa. All the money goes to Europe or goes to Asia. We buy whatever. We buy food. The money disappears. Capital flight is the devil. If you say devil, the devil is capital flight. That's the one that brings the poverty. So there's no other conversation. The government is not the problem. Stop telling yourself stupid things. The only problem is the devil is capital flight. Because if that money is in society, you have jobs. If it's in society, somebody can lend it to you. If somebody has, they can give you. They don't have because the money is shipping away. Now, but because we have invoked God into what we're discussing tonight, because we have went, gone to God as the authority for us to declare Africa's first economic war, since we have no continental authority, we have to look at this scripture from God. Judges 14, 14. I like the scripture too much. Judges 14, it's about Samson. He gave a riddle. He said, Out of the mouth of the eater shall come forth something to be eaten. Out of the strong shall come forth something sweet. Can you imagine? Out of the mouth of the eater, out of the one that's supposed to eat you, shall come forth something to be eaten. Out of the strong shall come forth something sweet. And we're going to invoke that same grace that Samson had tonight in this economic war by turning capital flight, which is the eater. You see, capital flight is the eater. So now we have to turn capital flight, which is the eater, to something that can be eaten. Then we can turn the strong, Samsung, all the strong brands, so-called strong, we can turn them into something sweet. And that's the grace we have tonight because we're powered by the God, the King of Kings himself. So the same grace Samson had is the same one we have tonight. That we're going to turn capital flight, which is the devil that torments Africa, to something to be eaten. And how do we do that? Because now what we do is, all the products that take capital flight away, we replace them or redirect more with local products sensitive to us. Now we use that capital flight money to make investment in 28 apps of BWS and bring billions of dollars into prosperity for Africans. I'm going to walk you through that in a minute. But that capital flight, you need to know that that capital flight is what we're interested in. It is the devil that torments Africa and is from the mouth of the eater. From the mouth of the eater shall come forth something to be eaten. So join us to turn the capital flight into the seed for Africa's prosperity. Simple is what we're doing here. Because we have said Africans cannot invest money. We don't want them to do that. We don't want Africans to take risk and lose their money and sink into deeper poverty because we want to do this program. God forbid. So if we don't want Africans to sink into any financial difficulties, how do we now do the program? By focusing on capital flight. That devil, capital flight, is the devil that wants to break his neck. From his mouth, we're going to get something to be eaten. Why are you looking for money? Aid. Which aid? Why are you looking for donation from IMF when Africa has over $200 billion that disappears away from here to foreign nations? And we're trying to borrow 100 million from them, 50 million from them, when we are funding 70 billion to companies in China through the mobile devices market alone. So you see where the enemy is? Yeah. The enemy is in the capital flight. And that's why we want to go and fight him. And that's why nobody in Africa has ever tried to fight him. No one has tried to fight the enemy there. Just so you know how serious what we're doing tonight is. 
Nobody in African history has said, let's go and fight in capital flight. Let's use the money from capital flight and develop our society. No one has ever said that or even tried to do that. But that's our approach. And it's our approach because we are terribly anointed to do that. We are invoking the powers of the king of kings. So we have the same power as Samson to say, out of the mouth of the eater shall come forth something to be eaten. Out of the strong shall come forth something sweet. So join us to ensure that we retain Africa over $100 billion here from capital flight. And we're going to use the money to fund different programs and different corporations with smart, fantastic ideas. But I want to go through what we're going to do with this money from the capital flight. Because I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to invest in this thing. I'm going to switch my word. Invest word, when you hear the word invest on Black Wall Street, it simply means to buy something. You say, we have redefined invest. Because most of people say invest, they think it's money. No, here, we, we keep using the same word, investment, investor. We keep referring you to that. But all you are is just somebody who bought the product. Why? Because out of the mouth of the eater, we're turning that product that you're buying now to the capital flight devil that we're killing through you. But your question would be, okay, yeah, I'm going to buy the product. I'm going to switch my phone. I'm going to buy whatever product that's sensitive to Africa. But how do I get this return? How do I get any financial benefit out of it? What is the cooking? Are you going to now get people to buy more products? Or the same product and then you pay me from it? Far from that. This platform, like I said, has redirect more than it has Black Wall Street. There are two different entities. In fact, there are three entities on this platform. There's redirect more, there's Black Wall Street, then there's development channel, you see. Three entities. As a fourth entity, UCA, which we're not really talking about right now, is the political aspect of what we're doing as a, as, as a people because we need that political unity. But we're not yet there. We're here on the economic parts of the platform four things on the platform, but the economic aspects are three. Number one is redirect more. Number two is Black Wall Street. Number three is development channel. So tonight I want to go a little bit understanding into what development channel is. Development channel is the first conglomerate to be listed on the Black Wall Street. Now we're going to list over 1,000 corporations on the Black Wall Street, but we're beginning with these first ones. This solid 25 companies that comes from development channel and i want to explain why we're beginning with them what kind of returns we expect from them what we're going to do with those returns then we're going to the final part of the program which is the devaluation of the upap i also explain what that upap is then we devalue the upap and tonight i'm blessed to have two wonderful ladies who also come at that point to cut the cake and so the upap the original stock upap people We'll have a wonderful thing to celebrate. But we're not there yet. So for now, I want to go to Development Channel. These companies are listed on the Black Wall Street. So when you switch your phone on Redirect Mall, which is available right now, you can start doing that from this weekend because we're finished with the platform. From this weekend, you can start switch. From Monday, actually, there's going to be a live broadcast on our Facebook page, on all these uh, social media platforms, where we're going to explain, we're going to have our people who are involved in our IT, they're going to come and explain to you exactly how to use the platform, how to log in, what to do, what roles, and all that kind of stuff. That will be on Monday. But between now and Monday, you can see the whole thing is already ready, so we have to prepare you to understand how it works. We've been building this platform for years. We're coming now to the end of building this platform where you can now participate on this platform and be able to use the Black Wall Street platform properly. Meaning, go to Redirect Mall, make the purchase, come on Black Wall Street, make the investment. That whole process will be ready from Monday. They'll be able to explain to you on Monday exactly how that works. But I'm here to give you the theory behind it. So that when you log into the platform from Monday, you can understand exactly what you're logging into. Now, you're supposed to go to Redirect Mall to buy anything. Now, we're beginning with phones right now. After phones, we'll take the next thing we're going to go into. Then we'll bring 10 products at the same time, whatever. But we want to really stay on the phones for a little bit. We want to make sure that we get the numbers in the phone. Why is that? Because the phone is where they have insulted, everywhere they have insulted us, 
where they have 99.9 percent .9 of the market share we are going for 99.9 .9 percent control that's how to pay back like the phone they've insulted us in that area that industry africa has received insult slap everything you can imagine we have no place in it at all so uh, we are fighting them for we're going to wipe them away from here zero we are going for complete total domination of the phone industry in that market but as you're switching that phone the question now will be okay so what happened so as you switch the phone you come on the Black Wall Street platform. Right now, when you come there, you're going to see 26 different, 25 corporations from Development Channel. Those 25 corporations from Development Channel are coming with what we call basic human need services. It solves the issue of basic human need. Basic human need is a philosophy that Africa must promote. Is the only way. Now, let me tell you something. If you don't have a philosophy behind an idea, a philosophy behind an move, economic movement, that movement will not go anywhere. Now, Africa has never had a philosophy to talk about. We've never. There's no African philosophy. All we just follow is what they bring to us. For instance, communism is a philosophy from a guy called Karl Marx in Soviet Union. It became quite big. Just one guy came up with this philosophy called communism. It became big. It started to use it to control the old Soviet Union and all that. Capitalism is a philosophy that was really pushed by another guy called Adam Smith. Americans adopted it, ran with it. You see, but Africa has never had any philosophy that we all know. But there's one that Africa has, and that's the one we're standing on today. It's called the Ubuntu spirit, compassionate capitalism. The philosophy that we can rise together is the African philosophy. Nobody knows about it. Nobody talks about it. Because we're so into the imperialists, you see. We're so into everything about the imperialists. What is from Europe is good. If it's white, it's good. Then we don't know that we actually have our own philosophy that we can make become a global thing. And that's what the platform is doing. That philosophy is known as compassionate capitalism, the Ubuntu spirit, the fact that all people can rise in their numbers together. Not one person. Capitalism believes in one person rising. Capitalism believes in one person making 500 billion, 300 billion, the rest don't have anything to eat. Why? Because it's called survival of the fittest. You see, that's capitalism right there. And we, as Africa, we're kind of messed up because we, capitalism doesn't work. It doesn't work for us. We don't understand that. We don't. So we need to make sure that we embrace a philosophy that we understand. And we need to push our philosophy to other parts of the world. Why is that? Because other parts of the world have the same problem. Basic human needs. Look at even America. America has health care crisis, if you don't know. A lot of Americans can't go to hospital. They can't afford it. Yet people are making billions of dollars in America. People are worth 500 billion in America. But their citizens can't go to hospital and get treated. Right? It's called capitalism. He <laughs> doesn't care about the little guy. He doesn't care. So Africa cannot adopt capitalism. Not just that we can't adopt it. We must preach our own philosophy. We must preach our own philosophy. The Ubuntu spirit, compassionate capitalism, that we can rise together. That's why the stock market system that we have in the Black was so important. It's the only way we can rise together. The only way. It's the only way we can rise in our millions together. Capitalism failed by forgetting basic human needs. Like I said, America, they don't have health care there. <laughs> America, people go to jail. They just go in jail. You don't, have anybody, you don't have money in America? You commit one small crime. Right there, you go to jail, five years, seven years. So all the people who come here are protesting in Africa, the government is dehumanizing them. Go to America and see what they call dehumanizing. Small little thing, you're black, they throw you in prison, seven years, ten years. Keep on their prison reform, they never reform anything. It's a bad system called capitalism. In fact, the America, I don't, I don't like America, right? but in places like America, where capitalism operates at its peak, 
They have prisons who need laborers, but they can't pay them. So the prison work with people to arrest people, to bring them to American prison so they can get cheap labor and manufacture something they can sell. Can you imagine? This is what capitalism does. We don't want that. We don't want to adopt such a system. We want to adopt and preach and promote and spread abroad the African philosophy, the compassionate capitalism philosophy, the Ubuntu spirit. And tonight I want to explain that to you because if you're switching your phone, primarily you're investing in this compassionate capitalism. If you're switching your phone, primarily you're funding this Ubuntu plan, this Ubuntu spirit. This desire to spread our ideology as Africans, our way of economy, not the way of economy of the imperialists, who are very self-centered, very individualistic. One person makes 100 billion, people are broke. What kind of stupid idea is that? Go and watch our shows and you see where I discuss about our value system. Like I said, we have put out so much light for Africa to run with. Watch the shows, go through all of them, and you see where we talk about the Ubuntu spirit, our own philosophy. Tonight, I want to take a minute and explain to you the American dream. Somebody said, why are you talking about America so much? Because America is who is the champion of capitalism. And if we're talking about compassionate capitalism for Africa, then we must be looking at America vis-a-vis -vis Africa, America vis-a-vis -vis Africa. That's the only way we're going to do this. We're going to be the superpower nation using the power of the private sector. The power of the private sector is what built America as a nation. So you see, we have too much in common with this nation called America. In terms of the philosophy of capitalism, and we're bringing compassionate capitalism, in terms of the fact that it was built by a superpower, as a superpower by a private sector, and we're doing exactly the same. So we have to keep comparing. So we have to look at what is known as the American dream. What is it? The American dream. We hear it a lot, the American dream. Now when we explain the American dream, then it takes us a second to now look into what is the African dream. You see, the American dream talks about the highest achievement of one's aspiration. That's the American dream. To create a society where your highest aspiration can be achieved and realized. It's the American dream. Emphasize the word. Your highest aspirations can be achieved and realized. Sounds good, eh? <laughs> it's not good at all. It's not. Because what happens is with the American dream, your highest aspiration. So what is your highest aspiration? <laughs> Some people want to go to the moon now in America. They're creating hundreds of billions all over the earth to go and fund the moon. They want to fund the moon and people don't have water to drink. They want to fund the moon and people don't have food on their table. They want to fund the moon but people inside of America don't have health care. So you see? To create a system where people pursue their highest aspiration? Ah, no, 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 my friend. That's actually very satanic, to be honest with you. Because highest aspiration means you do everything. You, I mean, there's no end to your material conquest. There's no end to your desire to keep rising and rising and rising. There's no end to it. There's no end. So they'll take all the resources in the world. To fund their highest aspirations. They will come to Africa and take slaves and kill people to fund their highest aspirations. They will go and kill all the Native Americans in America. 20 million people, they killed all of them to take their land. To pursue their highest aspirations. That's it. So pursuit of highest aspirations is the American dream. What is the African dream? We want to define the African dream tonight, which is what you are funding by switching your phone. By switching your phone, you are funding the African dream. What is the African dream? Access to all basic needs of mankind. That is the African dream. Somebody said, oh, well, you guys are not doing well, so that should be your dream. No, that's the height of our dream. Not because we're not doing well. That's the height of our dream. The height of our dream is access to basic human needs for everybody who is in Africa. 
And we have our way of doing that. We have the economic system. You get to know about that with time. Then we have the 28 apps which we are releasing. 28 app covers all the basic human needs. Those apps come from development channel. Development channel is to bridge the development divide between Africa and the West. And Development China has 25 solid, fantastic, innovative companies whose apps will be released next month in October. And that's what you're funding by switching your phone. And those Development China apps deal with basic human needs and tie those basic human needs to an economic system. That way we'll be able to check every African access to healthcare, access to water, the neighborhood where they live, we have geographical location ranking from all the neighborhoods in terms of infrastructure on the economic system. Then we have ranking for food security on the economic system. We have ranking all the basic economic indices, housing, access to credit on the economic system. They were able to provide solutions and make sure that every single person in Africa has access to all basic human needs. This is the African dream. And this African dream, you're going to be shocked. The whole world is going to buy into it. Why? Because that thing about individual aspiration doesn't work. America has so many poor people. India has so many poor people. This capitalism has not worked. So all over the world, there are a lot of people who are just as bad as Africa is. Just that Africa is like way worse in proportion. But every single part of the world, we have millions and millions of people who have been cut away because of this so-called pursuit of highest aspiration to the detriment of the rest of the world. So Africa is bold enough to grow up with our own economic system, our own economic philosophy, and we're going to push it across the rest of the world. And it's called compassionate capitalism. And it comes through development channels, 25 need-based applications. So we're releasing these 28 applications. And these 28 applications, you're going to find all of them on the Black Wall Street platform. As you switch from Read the Red More, with your phone, you score points. Let's say your points is $80. With those points, you invest in those corporations I'm talking about. And then you'll be able to get return. Right now, we're offering five years. You're going to get $100 every month for five years. Can you imagine? For doing what? For buying a phone. For switching your phone from the invaders to pro-Africa phone. Just by doing that, yes. We have three different phones that you can switch to. Switch to any of them, you'll get $100 every Christmas for five years. You don't have to pay any other money just to switch your phone. And your question will be, why is that? Why are you doing that? Because we want to destroy the invaders. To, enjoy, to destroy their hold on Africa, we need you to participate. And for you to participate, we have to give you an incentive for you to participate. There must be some personal gain for you to participate. Of course, I believe with time, you'll fall in love with Africa all over again as you see what we're doing. And with or without incentive, you'll still support your continent. But for now, we need to give you incentives for you to be part of our building of Africa, which is why we're giving you $100 every Christmas for five good years simply by switching your phone. And the returns are coming from those applications. Like I told you, the apps that are going to be on the, that are already on the Black Wall Street platform from Development Channel, so you're going to see those apps come with the app shows. Every week you'll be able to, if you subscribe, a subscriber, it only cost $3 to subscribe to those apps on basic human needs. And once you subscribe to about seven of the apps, you have access to the economic system. The economic system now prompts you. If you're a student, you have to get a student loan. If you're poor, if it ranks you, your bank account, your financial standing, you'll see how it all works out. But we have a fantastic plan with the 28 applications and the economic system to make sure that we preach the African dream, which is very simply equal access, access, full access to all basic human needs, water, housing, education, infrastructure, roads. Go check the platform. You'll see those things on development channel. So that's what you're invested into. And the last thing I want to let you know, because it's just, okay, that sounds brilliant. As I switch my phone, the apps are going to give me the money. Fantastic. But then the question is, how are we going to sell it, the apps? I have to explain that to you. Not just that we have a fantastic phone, which you're going to get by switching your phone. Not just that we have fantastic applications that are need based that Africans are definitely going to want to buy. Not just Africans. We're going to sell those applications all across the world. Like I told you, a lot of the world is a little bit like Africa. Everywhere in the world is a little bit like Africa. 
Why? Because capitalism has run rampage, has not cared about anybody, apart from those ones with their highest aspirations. So how do we push these applications? Because you say, oh, that sounds good, you get the application, but how are you going to sell it? Now, we have three player professions on a development channel platform. Now, not on Black Wall Street now, but on development channel platform. And, but you'll be able to get the job again through the Black Wall Street platform. Now, this player is number one player is the app trainer. Now, we have 600 locations in Africa. Each location, we are putting 1,000 app trainers on the system for each location. These app trainers come from the U.S., mostly African-Americans. Why are we using them? Because they have a better understanding of things like apps. You see, they're in a better position to explain such a thing to Africans and show you how the app works, and show you how you're going to use it, and be able to explain to you economic system. They're a little way, they're way more advanced, not a little. They're way more advanced. They live in America, so they're in a better position to interpret this thing to the average African. So we have them 600,000 as employees on the platform. Now, each of those app trainers manage those African Americans. They manage models who are now based in Africa. We have a program for models called the Performance Enhancer. So we're able to put 6 million models on the platform. We have another program for teachers called Teachers Revenue Source, where we're able to put 12 million teachers on the platform across Africa. So we have 18.6 million Africans on Development Channel platform who will be driving this application, subscription of this application across Africa and across the world. So you can imagine those numbers. 28 applications, because Development Channel has 25, then the Obviously, the Black Wall Street application, Red Red Mall application. So by the time we add all those 28 applications, Development Channel has 25 companies, but 26 applications. There's another company called L L Lambert Institute there. So we have a total of 28 applications, 28 apps that you can download on your phone, that you can subscribe to, and they only cost $3 a month. And that's where the switch money goes to fund. And this... Thing represents, like I said, this new face of capitalism called the Ubuntu spirit, which is compassionate capitalism, which is the belief that we can rise together, which is the preaching of the African dream. And I want you to talk about the African dream. Yeah, we have a flyer and post on the African dream, share it everywhere. Let people now have a sense of vision in Africa what the African dream is. The African dream is full access to all basic human needs. So we need here, people. We don't need to work. We're not Europeans. We like to be happy. Our family is happy. Our uncles are happy. Our relatives are happy. It's how we are. We're Africans. We're not like them. Those ones can have a billion and only a dog in the home. That's how they are. You see, we're two very different from these people. So we can't run our lives and our economy with their own. They can have 20 billion and alone. An African has even one million. He wants to get his friends. He wants to bring his relatives. He wants to help his mother. You see, we're very different from them. So we must adopt an approach that represents us, that looks like us, that sounds like us, like the Ubuntu spirit, which is the compassionate capitalism of rising together. So now you understand the applications that we have, 28 of them. You understand 18.6 million people are going to drive it from the platform from next month. The teachers, the models, and the African American app trainers. So 18.6 million people driving subscription to an app. So you do your maths. Even if it's 10 subscriptions in a month that they get, it's of what? 180 million subscriptions, 150 million in a month. So within the next six months from launch, here is the big story. We are setting of one billion subscriptions. We call it tip over. So from the phone switch. Now, the phone switch is, is limited right now. It's only 40 million Africans. Out of 1 billion Africans, only 40 million can get this offer of getting $100 every month for five years. Only 40 million can't get that. And we're going to have 1.2 million outlets. And 1.2 million outlets times 48 simply means we're putting the 40 million already. Now, those 40 million people, which includes you, listen to me right now, you need to join on the platform. Your returns will come from the apps, but the apps are being driven by the app trainers, performance enhancers, and the teachers, and there are 18.6 million people. So the summary of the whole thing is that we're going to get 1 billion subscriptions to these apps. We're doing that six months, nine months maximum from today that I'm talking to you.
Because as you are switching, we're pushing the abs. As you are switching, we're pushing the abs. As you are switching, we're pushing the abs. The process. The more the people are switching, the more we're pushing the abs. Until the abs become very self-sustaining, very self-driving, and we hit one billion subscriptions for the abs. One billion subscriptions for the abs. See what it means for us. The big story. It means we have one billion dollars a week on this platform from subscriptions. Our basic revenues will be a billion dollars a week. With a billion dollars a week, yeah. you can imagine what we will do in Africa with that. This is why this capital flight is, like I said, the devil who out of his mouth shall come forth something to be eaten. So through the capital flight of you switching your phone and your neighbor switching their phone and all our families switching our phone, we'll be able to use that capital flight and fund these 28 applications, put them through the 18.6 million influence triangle, and we'll be able to get 1 billion subscriptions and subsequent $1 billion every single week for us as revenue. And with $1 billion every single week, like I said, what can't we do? But the first thing we're going to do is, number one, we'll be able to give returns back every year to those people who switch their phones. That's the first thing we're going to do. So you're wondering where the hundred is going to come from. That hundred dollars will come from those applications, the one billion dollars a week. It doesn't end there. It's called tip over. That revenue we're looking for. So we're going to do so much with it. And I want to go through some of the things we're going to do with this money, one billion dollars a week. We're going to hit this figure in the next six or seven months. We're pretty sure of it. Nine months to the maximum from today, we should have hit the tip over figure. What do we intend to do with that? And someone said, what are you talking about? Most African governments don't even have that money. Yeah. We don't intend to be as poor as African governments are. Huh? We intend to have way more money than them. Right now, if you don't know, Apple has more money than the GDP of Canada and two other developed countries combined. Just in case you don't know that. So understand what we're discussing. If you have the innovation and you have the scheme on the plan on how to go about driving the innovation, you're going to get that money more than any government. Like I said, Apple right now, their worth of Apple is worth more than the GDP of Canada, the whole Canada production, and two other developed countries combined, including Australia. So don't, don't, don't find what we're saying even slightly strange. So we're going to hit this $1 billion a week, and this is what we intend to do with it. Number one, we're going to fund your individual return for switching the phone. We're going to be able to give you money back every Christmas. We're going to fund the industrialization of Africa. What does that mean? It means factory, 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 factory. Fact, more factory we, that you can imagine. Every day we open a new factory. Every day we open. From this office, I'll be announcing to you. So many, every time new factory. You'll see them come. We'll show you the videos where they're opening it. We'll create jobs. So we're going to fund Africa's industrialization. And because we have 600 locations, we know the needs of the people in the locations through the economic system. We know what kind of jobs can fit those people. We know what kind of factories to put in that location. So we'll be able to spread development across Africa. And that thing we're going to be able to do is our rural development. If we have this $1 billion a week, we're going to focus heavily on our rural development because our rural development has been abandoned. For the past 50 years, no African country has developed the rural area. None. Since independence. They have maintained the same cities that the colonial masters were. Nobody has said, let's move into our rural areas and develop. Nobody. No country in Africa has done that. It tells you the government doesn't have money to do anything. So we're going to use these resources and start to develop our rural communities, our villages. And the truth is, most of Africa and Africa's wealth is in the rural community, but Africa does not know that. So when we start exploring the development of rural communities, then you understand exactly where our treasure is. Now, we're also going to fund our continental security. It's very important that we fund continental security because we can't keep doing that. We have a security crisis in Africa. Then people have to call America to come and help. What are they? That's an insult. People don't do those things, man. Only slaves do that. You can't be in your place and call somebody to come and help you when you have a problem. No. So we're going to fund Africa's continental security. 
Nothing we're going to do. We're going to fund our image overseas. We cannot sit here and they, they give a picture of whatever they want about us and call us monkeys. No, no, no. We're going to be very aggressive in our PR communication on what Africa is, what Africa represents, who Africans are. We're not going to let those people detect our image overseas, detect our image. We cannot let them tell the story of Africa to the world. We must seize our story. We must tell our story by ourselves. We must control the narrative of what the world perceives about Africa. So that's very important we fund our image overseas. People that use Africa to, to do all these stupid uh, charity things in the UK and all these places across the world and they've been lying about Africa, we're going to sue them. We're going to have a lot of data collecting people who are running commercials of poor African babies and spoiling our image. We're going to sue those people. Why? We have money. We have lawyers across the world that we can use and sue those charities who keep embarrassing our image, use us to get money from their people and never even bother to bring the money here. That's going to stop too. And we're going to fund social programs, of course. Serious social pro programs for the blind. Because as you're making money in capitalism, you, the idea is you have to spread it. You have to spread it so that we can rise together. Look at Africa. Nobody, who cares about blind people here? Nobody. Who cares about deaf and dumb? Nobody. Who cares about disabled? Nobody. Who has anything that says disabled here? Respect them? Nobody. We have to fund social programs to help the weakest of the weak in our society. To show them what Africa can look. We're going to make Africa better than these people's countries. Because we're rising on the Ubuntu spirit. Where our maximum aspiration is access to basic human needs. Because we're not greedy people. We want to be content. Access to basic light, electricity, power, internet, food to eat. That's what we want. We want a society where people have access to basic human needs. That's Africa we're going to create. Now, the final thing we're going to fund is our unity. It's too important to destroy the European borders and bring us closer. Very important. Go again, if you don't know why, go and watch the shows. Like we said, the shows is where we have released the knowledge and the light and the illumination to Africans. So go and watch it. And when you watch it, you have a better understanding of why we must spend a significant part of that money fostering our legacy of unity, bringing us together. Destroying the bar. We're going to destroy all those European boundaries. There's no way it's going to survive. A billion dollars a week is in our hand. European boundaries will disappear from Africa. I can guarantee you that. So here we go. You can see the plan. You switch your phone. We have a stock market fantastic platform. And that's the only way you can bring prosperity to millions of people. You switch your phone. We invest in 28 apps of development channel, which spread the issue of basic human needs. We have the influence triangle of 18.6 million people that will push these apps and they will bring returns every year to those people who switch their phone. And then from there, we can move on to other aspects of Africa's economy. So this has been the whole night, the whole conversation. And I'm sure it's been very clear to you. And if you go on Black Wall Street platform, you'll be able to see those apps yourself. From next month, we'll release the actual apps where you can download them. If right now, they're ready, but we're not yet to release them yet because we want to start the switch first. When we start the switch, then you'll see the apps. You'll see the celebrities the talking about 28 shows. Then you see the 28 news, 28, then the services. You will get the real picture of the apps and the economic system. But we have to start from the issue of the switch first. Because out of the mouth of the eater is where something to be eaten shall come from. Now, today we're talking about the switching and UPAP. Now, the switching on UPAP, remember what I've said earlier, when you switch your phone, you have access to $100 a month from the stock market of Black Wall Street. So what is that $100 a month called? It's called UPAP, the same UPAP. Some of you have heard about UPAP before. Now I want to show you something about UPAP. UPAP is the arrow or the bullet, the bullet that actually kills the demon called Capital Flight. Again, the devil that torments Africa is called capital flight. UPAP is the bullet that goes into that devil and kills that devil called capital flight. How does he do it? Because UPAP is the incentive that makes Africans buy Africa. 
So we began new pap as a small idea. And then we said, oh, if you, do, if you join this idea, there's a new idea. It's a new economic system we're creating. So two years ago was when I began this. Three years ago, actually, here in Uganda. November, I just to be precise, 2017, we came up with UPAP. We said, if you buy this tablet, which wasn't even that fantastic of the quality because we're still, everything is still very organic. Organic means it's nothing to write home about. We didn't have any website. We didn't really have anything. But we tell me, if you buy this, our tablet, and we tell me, we don't have it on ground. We say, if you buy it, we will give you a return of $100 every month for lifetime. Now, why did we promise that? Because I was very confident on the 28 apps. We already had the 28 apps idea. We already had a lot of, a lot of it already developed in our, mostly in our infrastructure, in our head, in our intellectual property, part of our system, as a dead. So we said, we're sure we can pay this money. And we only offered that to 20,000 slots. We're about to come to the end of this meeting. So I want you to understand how that your return is coming, what it's called, and why we're cutting the cake tonight. So now, that 20,000 slots, we said, come and buy a computer tablet from us. Pay, we'll bring it for you. But we will give, give you $100 every month for a lifetime. People say, oh, that's a fraud. Of course, I didn't come out in public. If I would come out in public myself, that fraud thing would not have come up. But because I was not ready to be unveiled to the world, I was saying it inside the office, and our staff will now go and say it to the public. So our staff don't really know how to say it. So people start saying, ah, this is not real. Is it real? Is it, ah, this sounds like a scam. Is it, where's your website? We didn't have anything to show what we're talking about. But some people believed. Or some people dared. Or some people said, well, let me try it. Those people that said, let me try it, as known as original stock investor. Those ones that said, well, let's see how it goes. It sounds good, but it doesn't, I don't know how to read it, but let's try. They are called original stock investors. And there are 20,000 slots of the original stock. So those ones are promised $100 a month for lifetime for buying a product. You say, ah, that sounds ridiculous. But all of them bought it, they paid for the product. So UPAP walked. UPAP made these people start paying for those computer tablets. So we started to give people computer tablets. People started saying, wow, so I can get African product and I can get money. So the UPAP killed the capital flight from these people. Then other countries started to buy into the same UPAP, that original stock, UPAP. Then the people different parts of Africa started to buy into it. Nigerians started to buy into it. South Sudan, Congo, this, it began here in Uganda. People started to buy it from all, all, all over. Even in Jamaica, people are buying it. People are now buying from, uh, from whatever Africans all over the world are buying the UPAP, the 20,000 UPAP. But that is very expensive too because you have to get two computer tablets now. So the value is quite high. But tonight, we're going to reduce the value that you get for buying a mobile device through us. Before, if you buy a mobile device through the Red Mall called you get UPAP that pays you $100 every month for lifetime. Now, we're going to say, no, we can't offer that anymore. Why are we saying that? Because everyone says that. You have original stock. When you believe that your organization has grown, it's now in a better position, then you say, no, I can't offer you that again. And right now, we're in that position. Why are we in that position? One, we have finished the show, so the whole of Africa has our... We have released the light. Our websites are out. Our phone, everything is now... You can now see what we are talking about, unlike before. So now we have a real brand that people can verify and not see. So because we have a real brand, the real platform, and our general platform is also available now, will be released on Monday. So you see, we have a real position now to say, no, we cannot offer people that kind of thing again, where we pay them for lifetime for buying a mobile device. So we have to devalue what we offer. And that's what this night is about. This night is announcing the fact that we're devaluing what we're offering. So if you buy a mobile device from us, you can only get $100 every year for five years. Which is still fantastic. But those ones that we promise to pay them every month for lifetime, that promise kind of starts to come to an end tonight. It's the end tonight, really. Now, what those people are going to get is what we call cash out. Because now we're taking that UPAP and for offering it to 40 million Africans. 40 million slots of it. 
Now, as those 40 million slots starts to come in of the UPAP, people buy the phone to get the UPAP of one year for five years. As they start to come in, those ones that were with us for those 20,000 slots were giving each of them $30,000 as cash out. And then it will break their contract because we're not going to pay them for life again, you see. As we're breaking that lifetime offer, we're cashing them out with $30,000. So tonight is a big night for our 20,000 UPAP original stockholders. Most of them have been patient for the past three years. They've seen how we have developed, how we have grown the brand, how we have repositioned, how we have failed, how we have tried, how we have uh, tried again, how we have gotten it right. They have followed us and they have stuck with us up to this point. And that's how to make investment is to stick with that investment. It's not a, what's that thing that Africans like to do? Ponzi. You put money here, you come and collect next month, your friend pulls and collect, we don't do that here. You stick through, like somebody who's a farmer, you sow a seed, you watch the seed grow, you follow it till you can take fruit from this tree. And that's what we're doing tonight. Those ones that have carried and have followed through for the past few years, and the people who are lucky again to come and buy the UPAP stock very recently, Tonight is the night that we announce that it's now time for them to cash out of their investment. So 30 days from today, you power people will start to receive $30,000 until every single of those 20000 including myself, because I have UPAP stock, cash out 30000 on each slot that they have. So it's a great night for those people. And today we're going to cut the cake, and I'm privileged to have some wonderful ladies here with me who are going to cut the devaluation cake for UPAP. And that devaluation cake will signify the end of the $100 per month you pack. The devaluation will kick in. And then when you buy a phone from us, you'll be able to get the $100 per annum you pack. And then the people who have been with us as original stockholders will now start to cash out $30,000 because of tonight and this devaluation process. And tonight I have two fantastic ladies who are going to help, help me with this honor of cutting this cake. Uh, we have a former Miss Uganda is here. Then we also have the, the Maasai Queen, uh, um, Amanda, is also here tonight. So we have two fantastic ladies, and they'll come here, and we'll just celebrate on this note and cut this cake to devalue the UPAP and then share. You know, this, this symbolizes a shared prosperity that me and these 20,000 slot holders, all of us that own this UPAP, tonight we're cutting the cake saying it's now our time to reap the profit of our investment to cash out on what we are putting so much into over the past few years. Yeah, you, you just come up, please. Okay. So that's exactly how we, we, we intend to go that. So uh, we expect the, the ladies to come and, and join us. But I want to see if there's anything I've missed tonight. Uh, because if there's anything I've missed, uh, because after they cut the cake, that's the end of it for the night. But in summary, uh, I want to summarize what we have discussed today, which is one, there's no central authority in Africa so we have to invoke the authority of God who can bind all of us together and we can declare Africa's first economic war. We've also accepted tonight um, that, that arise, shine, for the light has come. That when the light comes, we are proven, you have to arise and you have to, then you can shine. And so the shining part is a consequence. You don't have to do anything to shine. You only need to arise and then you automatically shine. So the light comes, you arise and you should establish that. We've established that the only way you can bring prosperity to millions of Africans, to lift millions of people away from poverty, is through a stock market system. They've also established the fact that we want to tailor this stock market system to suit, to reflect Africa's ideals. Africa's ideals is shared prosperity. They've also explained the fact that we're switching our phones tonight. And as the beginning of the economic war, where every single thing that we consume, we must have equity stake in it, either by working there or by supplying there or by, or by being investors there. And that's the only way we're going to keep ourselves in prosperity and will not be slaves to this imperialist. Now, what I explained tonight, the development channel comes with 25 companies listed on the black, the first set of companies to be listed on the Black Wall Street platform are Development Channel 25 companies, which focuses on basic human needs. And these basic human needs will come through those applications, 28 mobile apps, that comes with shows, services, and news. People can subscribe to these apps for $3 a month, and by subscribing to these apps, we're able to get profits and returns to those people who bought the phones every single year for five years. 
We've also explained tonight that those apps will be sold by the Influence Triangle, which is 600,000 African Americans, 6 million models, and 12 million teachers, which is guaranteed to take us to what we call tip over, which is 1 billion subscriptions in mobile applications. Then finally, we've established the fact that once we hit this tip over, called 1 billion subscriptions to so the applications that promote basic human needs, we'll be able to fund so many different things in Africa, including our unity, fostering our legacies together, bonding us and destroying European boundaries, and building a superpower African nation. So it's been my pleasure to speak to you as I welcome these ladies to come and help us with this cake cutting. Careful. Fantastic. Amanda, do the honors. Mm. Okay, so for all the UPAP people out there, uh, this is just to symbolize the original stock UPAP owners. And this is to symbolize that your prosperity is here. Uh, so uh, we, I don't know how we're going to send you the cake. Those of you who are around, obviously, you're able to get a piece of this cake. But this is a symbol, symbolic reflection that we have devalued UPAP tonight and that your prosperity is not here. And 30 days from now, you start to cash out. So as people start to buy the phones to get the actual UPAP, which pays every year, you'll be able to cash out. And that's what we're celebrating tonight. I'm too glad, too happy to see this cake. Join us. Mm. Fantastic. All right, everybody, it's been a pleasure talking to all of you tonight. Um, this is Amanda. Uh, and uh, what, sorry, what's your name again? Uh, this is a former, former Miss Uganda. Uh, so we've enjoyed the two of them here. We'll be able to cut this cake. Uh, for you symbolizing that UPAP has been devalued. Um, and I don't know, I want to have a piece of it, but it looks a little bit too sugary for me. So, yeah, it's been a wonderful night. And I hope that we've been cleared tonight. And uh, we are very certain of our direction as a people, which is to make sure that Africa starts to recover. And we're going to start that by making sure that we dominate the mobile devices market. We'll be able to take those uh, proceeds from there to uh, push those apps that will in turn now lead Africa to real financial prosperity. And it's been a pleasure speaking to you. And on this note, I join these ladies and myself to say congratulations to all original UPAP stockholders. And for everyone else, we say Africa first. Africa first. Africa first. Economic war. We are ready for them. Join us to ensure that your pocket is doing well.